Can sound insulation measurements with a swept handheld microphone introduce systematic discrepancies? A lot of difficult words in that sentence. Yes, and now we're gonna do some nerdy stuff for acousticians. This is something that is very important that you know about when you do sound insulation measurements, airborne sound insulation especially. Let's see if I can do a little 3D sketch here. So if we consider a, a small bedroom and then when you do handheld swept measurements with your sound analyzer, there is one way of doing it that's quite common that um, you simulate like a think consider it like a three quarter soda can and the outline of that. So if you have the the operator is standing in the middle of a room like this and then the operator sweeps the microphone. Let me change color here. Uh, three quarters of a circle like this and then you go up and then you do three quarters of a circle in the other direction and then you come back to the starting point and that is one sweep. So you sweep oh I, actually I painted it I think in this direction. So this is the the sweep path that you will do with your microphone like so. And however if you're in a smaller room you're gonna get more and more eigenfrequencies, room resonances in, in this room. And if we paint this one from the top, just gotta be careful now so I don't paint behind my camera picture. The sound field at lower frequencies is typically, has the behavior like this, that close to the corners especially, you get a high sound pressure level for low frequencies and then in the middle of the room you get a more quiet zone. And this is true for all rooms, but uh, the frequencies where this occurs is dependent on the, the, the room dimensions. And also the z-coordinates in the, in the height direction. Now, I think you might see where this is going. So, depending on where the operator is standing inside this sound field, you will either, if you're standing here in the middle and you do your sweeps here, you're gonna sweep in a quieter zone Whereas if you move a bit towards here and you do your sweep, you're going to get more of this strong sound pressure level region and you're going to get a different result. And this can vary quite a lot. I know for a fact that in certain rooms, I've just within one arm length in a given third octave band, I could measure more than 30 dB difference just by moving my hand between two points in space in inside within an arm's reach inside a room. So this can be very sensitive in the low frequency region. And here's, here's the catch. Let's say you're measuring between two small bedrooms that are on top of each other. So the view from the side, it would be like this. You sweep here with your microphone and you have a loudspeaker omnidirectional of course and then you go down here and you and you do the receiving room uh, sound pressure level so you measure L1 and L2 down there but what happens here this is really easy to miss if you're an acoustician doing um, sound pressure level measurements like this if you look from the top in the top room this is a small room let's say it's like 26 cubic meters small bedroom what happens well, my guess is that you're gonna put your loudspeaker on a tripod, perhaps, in this corner. And you cannot do your uh, source room sound pressure level measurement close to the loudspeaker, because you're gonna mess up the... If you, if you put the microphone straight toward the loudspeaker, you're gonna get a very strong sound pressure level, which is not the right way to do it. You need to have a certain distance between the source and the microphone when you do your measurements. So you're probably gonna move up and do your sweep, your sweep in this region, perhaps. Hard to measure a human being from above. Oh, well, <laughs> let's, let's do it like this instead. The operator does the measurement here in this region.
And then you go to the room on the second, you go down to the, the lower story. Beneath, this is from the view from top. I have to write it out. And this is view from side, just to be super clear. And then when you go down to the room below, which is exactly the same size and everything, and then you typically, my guess, is that you do the sweep in the middle. And then if you remember this sound field problem, this is, you have the same case here and you have the same case here. So chances are that you're going to measure in a corner position or mo closer to the corner here than what you do down here. And in this low frequency region where this is a big problem, that means that in the source room you're going to measure a higher sound pressure level than what the average level actually is. And when you go down and you do the measurement in the receiving room, or you go up, it doesn't matter, it could be in any direction, but you measure in the middle of the room with your sweep down here. Now what happens? You get a quieter level here. And that means that you overestimate L1. It's going to be too large. Uh, or actually not large. High is perhaps a better choice when you're talking about a high level. Too high. And L2, the risk is going to measure it too low. And this will have the corresponding effect on your sound reduction index, which is based on L1 minus L2. If you've got 100 decibels in the sending room and you've got 40 in the receiving room, you've got 100 mean minus 40, it's a difference of 60. And if this one is too high and this one is too low, you're going to overestimate it. So you're going to say it's, it's better than what it really is. And this can result in systematic discrepancies. I've done a lot of studies on this topic with, in my PhD thesis with measurement uncertainty. And uh, you really need to know about this. So don't, don't just do the measurement. You have to remember that the low frequency region is very sensitive. And especially if you're working in timber constructions, this is critical knowledge. Because if you do this t mistake in a concrete construction, it's not obvious that it will create a big issue because the sound reduction index in a concrete construction is primarily determined by mid and higher frequencies. But in the timber construction, it could be the case that almost everything is determined by the lower frequencies. And then you have this discrepancy that can cause a great havoc in the low frequency re region. So be very careful with, you, with the low frequency measurements and especially when you're working with timber constructions, you need to have control over the low frequencies and the measurement uncertainty. And in today's video, I am wearing some kind of beige with some, I think it's black and beige woven into this fabric, gray shirt, a little pocket square with blue, dark blue and light blue and a splash of orange. And this is the colors that I saw. I can't, well, the window is overexposed now, it's just white, but the ocean is here. We've got the blue ocean, we've got the gray skies, and this is the grass that is coming out from beneath the snow in the spring. And this morning when I looked out my window when the sun was rising above the sea, above the ocean, there, there's this beautiful orange that just covers everything when it comes, exactly when it comes up. It peaks up above the horizon, you get the orange. So this is the colors, this is the first colors I saw this morning when I looked out the window. So I decided to use clothes with, based on that. All right, see you later.